Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Yes, I'm doing this video from home because I forgot to record the intro video for the latest vlog. So we are on episode three of the Clio build. This is a really interesting episode. Well, interesting for me because I'm pushing my limits as to what I can actually do. Um, our new dashboard has arrived and we are going to install that in this video. But most importantly, and we're going to jump straight into that in a minute. I've run a diagnostic on the car, cleared lots of data, and we're going to find out if we've bought a non-runner or if the car actually starts. So before we jump into that, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's watching. And if you could hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification, that'd be absolutely amazing. All your support, we're getting loads of comments now coming in and the channel's only been up for a couple of months, but we're actually getting quite a lot of um, feedback from you guys and I really appreciate that. So keep the feedback coming, comment, thumbs up if you like what you're seeing, thumbs down if you don't like what you're seeing and then tell me where I can improve. But let's jump straight into it and see what we can do. So I've just done a Carly check to see what faults and as you can see there it's saying 33 issues found I'm just gonna do a clear on that no nope. I don't want that to happen I don't want it to turn off okay and I'm gonna clear the engine faults right 100% complete so let's close that now before repeating the check Oh, will it start? Yes! We have a runner. So good news, the new dash has turned up today. <clears throat> I want to make a start on this. I have only got probably about half an hour before I have to head home. So what I thought I'd do is a bit of prep work the day before, um, take out some of the, the basic bits like the air vents, because uh, these just pull out. So remove everything I possibly can before we have to get to the stage where we remove the battery, because obviously the battery's got to come off um, before we take out the center console, the airbags, just from a point of view of safety. So I'm gonna start with, um, like the lower areas of the glove box. I've looked online and there is very little um, information on how to safely remove the dash. So this is going to be a bit of a, a winging it and figuring it out as I go along. Once I've got all these kind of bottom areas stripped off, all the kind of plastics that are in the way, I can then look at the new dash that's turned up, work out where the bolt holes are to then kind of ascertain as to how to remove the top section and uh, we'll go from there. So let's see if we can work out how to remove a dash from a 2017 Renault Clio. So I just want to do a quick summary of what I've done. Um, removed the glove box first. There was a couple of screws um, and then the rest of it was pretty much clips and it just kind of pulled out. There's a little cover plate just here and I got to the clips. Got to the clips behind it. Um, and got that bit out. The tunnel sides, they just clip on. And then there's a screw down here 
and another one down here which I'm guessing is holding in the surround for where the gear lever is. The rest of the centre tunnel down here which I need to take off because the SRS module I believe is down in this area. I think I can just about see it between the gear lever and the handbrake. There are two bolts which are kind of like hidden in parallel to where the seats are. So I'm hoping if I move the seats all the way forwards, I can get those out. And I think I'm gonna cut, or try and cut this off, just so I haven't got a whacking great airbag in front of me. Um, and I've specifically left the steering wheel at a 90 degree angle because there's a clip here and a clip here, which you need to um, basically push two prongs in, that will release the airbag. But obviously I'm not gonna do anything else um, with regards to removing sections of the dash such as the centre console or the dials or the steering wheel until the battery has been disconnected and I've left that disconnected for at least 30 minutes because they say that some of the electrical systems specifically the airbags can keep a residual charge so I think that's enough for tonight I've already had a call from the wife so she's pretty much desperate for me to get home and help put the kids to bed so we'll pick this up uh, tomorrow and carry on with the strip down So it's day two, back on the Clio and getting the dashboard all dismantled. So I'm going to disconnect the battery, but before I've done that, I've turned the steering wheel, because we don't want the steering lock to kick in. I've turned it so it's at a 90 degree angle so we can get access to the pins behind there. So let's get this disconnected. Right, so it's the second day, I'm back on to removing the dash. So I've now removed the battery. Uh, real good tip, little sandwich bags. Whenever you're taking any screws out, label them up as to which area you've taken them from. Luckily all the screws I've taken out so far are the same. Um, and that way it just helps you identify it. Only thing I've done this morning before switching on the camera is to remove the two bolts which are down in the centre tunnel, which allows that to just lift straight out. There's a couple of connectors on there, so I'll disconnect those, and that's another bit out. So, other areas we need to focus on, I think, take the steering wheel off next. So, there's a tab either side of the steering wheel that needs to come out, and hopefully, just a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, will push that out of position there we go and then one connector on the back of the airbag so we found a problem the connector here I don't know how easy you can see that on the back of the airbag has actually melted into position so it's all melted into there so we're going to have to see if we can get a new wire that runs from the um, the ring down here back to the airbag because that's not safe to reuse that connector and I'm a bit confused as to why I'm guessing with the, maybe the force of the airbag going off that's knackered that but sorry just to show you the two pins that we were pushing in is that one and that one and they release they release the um, airbag from the steering wheel and we'll carry on and we just won't refit the steering wheel airbag for the moment and there's a little tab on the thread that basically the steering wheel connects to because we want to make sure that the steering wheel realigns directly to the tab I'm actually going to score a little scratch into the metal so I know where to realign it and then that should just pull off okay so that's all the uh, the column the stalks you've got one bolt on the back there that kind of wraps around and holds it into place and then all the connectors on the back 
So I think the easiest way and the safest way to do it, to make sure there's no damage to any of the cables or anything like that, if we can't break this piece down and just replace the ring gear, I think the easiest thing to do is just to buy a whole new stalk. So I've got the part number there. I'll go away in a second and have a look and see how much one of those is. Right, next thing I'm gonna try and do is get this screen off. So. did find a video on how to remove this and it is literally a case of remove the surround which just pops on and then we have to take out these four bolts here oh. <sighs> tell that's never been off before oh, that rock solid okay looks like we then got two screws holding that bit in again t20 torque bits Okay, that's a new one for me. The camera said it was getting too hot and switched itself off. So I've managed to get the console out of here, but I'm not going to remove it completely. Um, I've just turned it around because trying to feed take this off um, from around the gear lever is a bit of a nightmare. Um, I just quickly looked on eBay and the same place we got the dashboard from has the stalks that we need. So they're ordered. They should be here tomorrow, which will be Friday. I'm going to go and unwrap the new dash now and work out where all the bolts are. I have noticed there are some down the corner here, so we're going to have to pop the A-pillar covers off. And then um, I'm just going to have a general tidy up because I've got so many parts lying around now, I don't want anything to get damaged, I'm going to put all that safely into a box. Right, so looking on the uh, new dash that we've got, it's in really good condition. There's a couple of little marks here, but other than that, it's really, really good condition. Um, there are two bolts at the bottom of the pillars, and obviously this, these are holding the dash in place there. We've taken out one of the bolts from under here, which has mainly freed up that area. And then there are two more bolts holding onto the uh, airbag bracket, so they need to come off, so they're actually underneath there. And then there's this bolt here. So the whole section now, all this from what I can tell is fairly loose um, on the new dash it actually extends all the way down to here so it's one solid piece so what I'm going to need to do is get the card reader out of here that's the next thing I need to remove as well as these pillars so let's start with the pillars get those off uh, I say the power's off anyway so we don't need to worry about curtain airbags going off or anything like that and uh, carry on with the teardown So this is the new, or the replacement dash as I should say. Um, really good condition, there's a couple of little marks just up here, but it doesn't really matter because as soon as we put that covering back over the top, we should hide those. Uh, as I said before, there was a couple of bolts. So you've got one at each end there. You've got two bolts where the airbag connects to, and obviously we've got the replacement airbag in there as well. You also have bolt hidden down there, a bolt hidden down there, and then there's some more here and here. One bolt there. There was a bolt, if I remember correctly, yeah, just under there. And then as I said before, another bolt that goes into there. And that's all that pretty much holds it into place. And then you've got clips across the top which kind of lock into place. Um, on the actual dash so now we've got it all stripped out I took the heater controls out in the end because it was just a case of lifting these out of the little holes on there 
I think we'll get it all in reconnected up and then the only thing we won't be able to connect is the stalks which should arrive tomorrow and after we've done that we can reattach the wheel put the new airbag in and go from there and say that's the connector for the airbag that goes back in underneath here so that's the bolt points on there which go to the airbag let's get the new dash in Okay, so the next thing we need to have a look at <coughs> before we proceed any more with reconstructing the dash is the airbag <coughs> control module, the SRS module. Um, it's actually located just down here. We need to make sure, if you can see that, we need to make sure that this module is the same part number as the module that was in there, or that is in there. There's a little plastic cover. I think I can get to, but there we go. 985101, 985101, 389R AAA. Same part number. So I think we're good. So, what we're going to do is pop this module out. <clears throat> There's just a little tab there. So that connector comes off. So again, a little tab there. That connector comes out. Not sure if I've got that on camera. Basically, when it's locked, little tab, pull that, releases, pulls the cable out. So that's the module replaced. So now I can reattach the centre tunnel. And then before I do the bottom sections of the dash, I'll, I'll be able to do that side, get everything buttoned back up, plug the airbag back in. And then this side, I'll have to leave that until we've got the um, replacement stalks, because obviously the cowling that goes around here needs the stalks to be in place first. Um, and then we'll move on to seat belts. So the last thing I'll do today will be the seat belts. Right, so set some centre tunnel clipped back in and bolted at the back. A couple of trim pieces that just go around the handbrake. And it should just clip into place. And then we've got this trim piece which sits around the front where the gear gator is and that's held into place when we put the side bits back on here and here all right I think that's all I can pretty much do with the dash until we get the stalk controls so let's move on to the seat belt 
pretensioners and see if we can get those sorted out. I'm running out of daylight and it looks like it's about to start to rain, so uh, we'll see how quick it is. Um, actually, <laughs> I need to clip this bit back in as well. But the dash has really taken shape now. We can see that they've got the nice new dash in. There is a little bit of damage up here. I'm not too fussed about that. It could be smart repaired if I wanted to go for that, but ultimately, um, considering what it was when we got the car, it's 100 times better. So let's have a go at those uh, seatbelt pretensions and see how easy they are to swap out. I'll go through the process I've done on the driver's side to replace it, but ultimately, there's a retaining clip here. That allows that hole there to then lock into place with the bigger washer and come off. However, I already had to cut this seat belt because the tension was so tight I couldn't move the seat forwards. Excuse all the mess in the back, I've got nowhere else to store all the parts for the moment. Okay, and then what we're gonna do, this clip lifts off, there's like a little retainer at the top. That lifts off, 16 mm um, bolt behind here, okay. And then we'll pit, pop the trim off, that just literally unclips. And then down here, underneath that bit of trim, is that 16mm bolt. So disconnect the airbag connector, or the airbag style connector. Undo the 16mm bolt that's under there. Undo the 10mm bolt, which is holding the um, guide in place and then in reverse we just put the uh, new seat belt back in making sure that when you fit the new seat belt it uh, is actually the right one there's a little R and an L on the end of the seat belts just to double check you got the right one so let's get that installed now okay so in summary really productive day Dash is all back together with the exception of the bit there. Seat belts have been changed out. So as soon as I get the parts tomorrow, I can do the reassembly here, reconnect the battery, and hopefully the airbags won't all go off in my face and I end up spending money on another um, dashboard replacement. Well, at least I know how to do it now if it does happen. I'll catch you tomorrow when we get the rest of the dash put together and then reconnect the power. Right, so that's the stalks all built back up. So any modules that were on our old set are now on this one. And it just, for me, it means that as many of the original parts are going back onto the car. Okay, so that's the uh, dash fully reassembled. I've got no spare bolts, which is really, really good, which means I've put everything back where it needs to be. I say this end panel just clips on, so you fit this first, two bolts, bolt down there, put the rubber seal back on, reconnect that. Passenger airbag I've left to switch off at the moment, just for the initial test, and then we'll disconnect the, disconnect the key. Um, switch it on and then try it again just to make sure that there's no issues. Let's get the uh, battery reconnected. Okay, battery's back on.
brakes haven't gone off. Let's give it a go. You have no idea how nervous I am right now. So, oh lovely, authentication key. And we don't have the original documentation, so we're not gonna know what that is. Clocks have come back on. I'm gonna do this from the passenger side. As I say, I've switched off the passenger airbag. Okay, okay, power was on. Please don't go off, please don't go off. Yes! And no airbag light. Sounds terrible because everything's disconnected. So let's turn that off. Oh. The hip hop don Semtex will be in the building ready to go. And then Shayna Marie taking up. Yes, that worked. For that layer. <coughs> brilliant so slightly annoying had to pop the radio back out there is an app and i will uh, tag it in the description and basically all you have to do install the app completely free there are a few adverts with it um what's it called renault code generator and all you do is use if the you're app, thinking of right? switching to is use the app scan one of the barcodes on the top and it automatically generates your code as opposed to having to go to reno on their website and pay 10 pounds to get the code back so yeah brilliant i'll uh, tag that in the description we're now all up and running i'll put this trim back on on the four screws and get this edited and uploaded so you guys can watch how it was done so that brings us to the end of another episode on the clio really impressed how the dash has all come together it looked really daunting but actually when you break it down into little bits and you just kind of focus on one area at a time it's actually not that bad so and it, we're pushing my limits here on knowledge so um to do a complete dash replacement both airbags both the seat belts i think was really really good and the benefit is in this episode we found out that this car runs and i did move it back and forth using just like reverse and first gear to make Make sure that uh, the gearbox was okay the clutch felt absolutely fine there's no strange noises or anything now I couldn't do it for very long obviously because everything is disconnected at the front but that is a massive thumbs up so interior is now done as opposed apart from needing probably a good clean once we finished everything else so now let's focus on the front end I already have the um, subframe that's turned up and I have the rad pack so with uh i'll just double check with the repair guys to make sure it's not going to cause any major issues but we can definitely change out the slam the, the slam panel the subframe um i'm going to get the order into Renault for all the new parts and all the skins and everything we need to get from there and then we can start to put the front end of this car back together the only thing i'm struggling with at the moment is still trying to find the right style bonnet i sorry bonnet right style bumper um bonnets there's loads of them out there but i'm waiting for one to turn up in the right color of black because if we can get one in good condition that's one less thing i have to pay for i don't have to pay for the bonnet to be resprayed and the same goes for the wing i found a couple of wings out there one of them's about a two hour drive away but it is in really good condition so i'm kind of 50 50 as to whether to just go and get it it's the only one i've seen in really good condition 
um, and then I say yeah just trying to get that bumper but I mean that's going to be the last thing that we have to do only other thing I need to source is a replacement connector for this particular part of the loom um, all the actual contacts in there all the wires um, through to the pins are absolutely fine but the connector is broken so I need to find out what connector is missing off there get one of those orders as well but yeah great way to end uh, another episode on a really good positive front so if you guys have enjoyed what you've seen and you're really liking the channel please hit subscribe hit the bell um, icon so you get notifications every time I drop a new video and yeah if you want to add some comments I try and reply to all the comments in the in the uh, description below anything I've used sort of like with regards to the software um, the app that I got to actually unlock the stereo um, code I'll tag all that stuff in the description so look forward to seeing you with the next episode thanks very much